So, let us look at a few examples right and then to then try to understand and then try to understand uh, how we can how we can arrive at something called a response a corner response function because we want to be able to flag a corner and this uh, response function right the way we will actually devise it is such that uh, it can even tell us whether it is a whether it is an edge uh, whether it is a plain patch uh, you know flat patch or whether it is a corner right. Uh, but then before we go into that let me just look at a look at a few examples and uh, let us try to plot how this i x and i y might actually look like right. So, suppose I have I have a case where uh, let us say I just have some noise and this is like a uniform intensity plus some a and I take a patch and suppose I try to plot i x and i y. Okay. So, what kind of values will I get for i x and i y? Suppose I try to plot uh, the gradient. So, what it means is if I were to take this patch around right that was the idea no? last time when we talked about uh, corner we said that we can take a patch and we have to move around wherever we are in the image if you are near a corner then certain gradients will go up. If you are in a flat patch uh, what you would typically expect is that uh, right this is because there is most of it is uniform and there is only probably little amount of noise there. So, yeah, so the most of it is going to be zero and perhaps we may just get a get a get us get a, get some small gradients here and there, but nothing, but nothing right that can be considered as uh, significant. And then get a look at a case when we have an edge, a vertical edge, let us say, hmm. let us say we assume it to be 0 to 255. Then Sorry, mostly, mostly zero, and you'll have mostly ix, right? So, so mostly ix. So, so let's say it right, mostly, mostly right. We got some some values of ix, and maybe right very few values of iy. I mean, there could be some some small noise here and there, but more or less right. It is going to be primarily dominated by ix. Why did I not uh, put anything on the left side for Ix? Intensity, Intensity yeah, so 0 to 50, right? Whichever way you do the patch, you will always get an Ix that is positive, okay. Then uh, good, that is a lot of alertness. Then we can have again horizontal edge, right? We can let us forget that, that is probably easy, you will get something along Iy. Then uh, of course, if I change the kernel, then this will come on the opposite side, right? Then, oh, let's first look at uh, look at a case like this. I have a I have a diagonal edge. Let's say that I've got zero to two fifty five, and let's and let's assume that uh, you know going up is up is a, up is a positive gradient. That means, if I had a vertical edge and 0 to 255, let us assume that that is all positive i y and similarly you know going from left to right is all positive i x. Okay. So, if you have like this, then what do you expect to see? Some i x naught comma i y naught to be there. i x naught comma i y no just one? No, along from yeah. So, so if I take a patch here and right, I am going, going to move this patch around. Right, then what kind of gradients will you see? I mean, you are going to see both Ix and Iy, right? Because there is a gradient along x, they will lie, lie on some line, right? So you can you can imagine that they are kind of lying right along some along some sort of you know some line. Now one of the things, right, that we actually that uh, and then okay, let's kind of look at a corner then finally, right? If I had a corner, uh, right, something like this. And uh, so let's say right, there is zero inside the corner and 255 outside or whichever. Let's always assume that we are just looking at the positive gradients. Then now what will happen is you will have actually whichever way you move, okay, you will get actually gradients because it's a corner. And therefore, it you can think of, okay, let me put it in a different color. So you can kind of think of a lot of activity all over, all around. I mean, okay, whichever way you move, 
there is going to be a lot of activity because you are sitting at a corner and these are not very small. I mean, these are unlike the ones that we showed for a flat patch where also right because of noise maybe you had some gradient, but, but here these are going to be significant and uh, these will be whichever way you go right, you will get actually gradients. Now, when you see something like this right, you see that uh, you see that you know, so for example, if I, if I go here right, just to kind of motivate the the notion of uh, corner response function and I uh, know uh, just to motivate it what the R can do. So, last time right, we said that R was like uh, P diagonal P transpose and we said that the eigenvectors of R are the columns of P. So, everything is actually 2 cross 2, this is just that uh, gradient matrix right. So, we said that this guy will have lambda 1, so this one diagonal is just lambda 1 0, 0 lambda 2 again values are all actually greater than or equal to 0 in this case that and all right we, we saw last time and uh, then the point is uh, the Eigen vectors right which are the columns of P. Now, whenever you talk about doing a compression right what do you do I mean if I if I had if I had a data where let us say some data right does not have to be I x and I y if I had a data that had a correlation like this where it looks like x and y sort of move together right when x increases looks like y will also increase or it can be a negative correlation in this case it is positive. So, you always think about a way by which you can actually decorrelate the data right because it looks like it is unnecessary to send both I mean if you are looking at transmitting something right it looks like transmitting one is as good as telling something about the other. So, why transmit both right. So, at that time what do you do I mean, this is what we teach in a PCA. So, we say that right, look at the you know so kind of compute the covariance of that data and then compute the Eigen vectors and the Eigen vectors will then will then point towards. So, the highest uh, most significant Eigen vector which has of course, the highest Eigen value right points towards uh, the maximum variance and then you can you will have an orthogonal Eigen vector to that which will which will point towards the next highest uh, dominant sort of a direction then whatever you know it is a 2 cross 2 that is all you have. But imagine right I mean if you had a higher dimensional space and then you can think of all these Eigen vectors pointing in say different directions. And here for us it is simply the gradient right. So, it is the variance of, of this of, of the of the gradient because that is where that is what R has right that is what R is about. And therefore, right it is clear that uh, it is clear that if I try to uh, so for example, right I mean if I did the if I did a PCA right I mean suppose I mean which is which is exactly this. So, I have got the Eigen vectors right. So, so in this case right how do you think for example, right for for this, uh, so 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 how do you think will my kind of Eigen vectors look like? How will the, how do you think is my is my is my Eigen vector going to look like? So it's going to look like this, right? So along this, yeah, along along this guy, right? I'll have the maximum maximum spread, right? And and as you see, that's orthogonal to the edge, right? And then and then you'll have another direction, which will be which will be in this in this case kind of say perpendicular, but then that may have very little variance. Okay, maybe I should just show it like you know uh, very little variance right there in that in that direction and therefore, right you get a sense for something is going on right. If you are sitting at an edge uh, be it inclined or be it vertical or horizontal whatever it is right you will get a sense for what might be happening there and uh, and as far as as far as the corner is concerned right you, you expect expect both Eigen values to be reasonably significant because there is a spread along x and there is also also you know, a good spread a good spread I mean so whichever way you see right there is there is a there is I mean whichever way you move there is actually you know say a significant amount of variation and therefore right here so so what you have so what you can think about is so for example right if you have this case then you can sort of say that both lambda 1 and lambda 2 are going to be very small because the spread itself is very small. If you have something like this right where where you have an edge whether it is inclined or whatever you can say that one of them right well, no lambda 1 perhaps is high, but then lambda 2 is going to be low. Whereas, in this case right you are going to say that both of them are have to be low and in this case you expect both of them to be high I mean high in the sense that not like not like those small little values that you might see if it was just a plain patch right this is exactly what is exploited. Uh, by this corner response function as it is called by Harris uh, in this Harris detector and that corner response function as it is so or uh, yeah corner corner response or it is also called the corner strength ok. Now, the way right this is set up is that you know you can get a feel for in fact all three of them um, ok is given by 
given by sub m is equal to lambda 1 lambda 2 minus some kappa times lambda 1 plus lambda 2 square. Now, if you had a flat patch okay, and this kappa is typically like in the range you know 0 0.04 to such so a small number okay, 0 0.06 again this is some something that let us say people have arrived at. Okay. So, that is the range of this kappa. So, if you have a flat patch then you know that lambda 1 and lambda 2 are both small right are both small and therefore, uh, what do you expect this m to be like uh, close to 0 right. So, your response will be such that m is approximately 0. So, m is approximately 0 right. So, if it is a flat patch and that is one way to know where you are. Then another is edge. So, in edge right. So, so you have lambda 1 high and we will always assume that lambda the highest eigen value you are ordered you have ordered it right and lambda 2 is low and whenever you say lambda 2 that means orthogonal to the edge direction that is the Eigen vector you know. So, in this case uh, so in this case right what do you think what do you think m will be like. So, so you see so what you have is uh, uh, kappa mm, for edge huh? so lambda 1 plus lambda 2 right. So, you have lambda 1 high and you have like lambda 1 square and then you have got lambda this lambda 2 is low right. So, the lambda 1 into lambda 2 will get kind of say pulled down right because the lambda 2 is low and therefore, you will get actually m to be less than 0 because even though kappa is low, but then lambda 1 lambda 2 is going to be really low and therefore, this will be typically m less than 0 I mean significantly less than 0 because this is also we are saying approximately 0, but this will be significantly less than 0 and if you had a corner then both lambda 1 and and lambda 2 being significant when we say that high right what we mean is they are both going to be significant and therefore, what will happen is you know even though lambda 1 plus lambda 2 might be reasonable, but then this kappa will pull it down, but lambda 1 lambda 2 are both reasonably high therefore, we, we believe that m is m will be significantly greater than 0 if it is a corner right. So, so something like this is what will flag as you kind of move the patch around the image right. So, everywhere I mean you can get a get a sense for the how the how the how the gradients are and based upon that uh, if you if you computed a corner response then you would know right which one of these actually could be the potential corners. Uh, of course, one of the things right that you still need to do is uh, what is called. So, what you do is you know you typically set a th set a threshold because you know you cannot I mean you cannot just declare right everything is a corner just because m crosses 0. So, what you normally do is you set a threshold. set a threshold again there are some hyper parameters right and uh, and and only points with corners with corner strength let me write it as cs corner strength greater than this threshold whatever set a threshold t greater than t okay and uh, find okay we are still not not actually declaring them as corners okay so, and find all points all the points with uh, let us say a corner strength greater than t and then what do you think after this you would want to do based upon whatever you have learned till now I have I mean this was a similar problem that we encountered some time earlier right I set a threshold but then right there are so many guys that will rear their heads now because it is you have to no. Uh, so, how would you how would you handle this something that we did very recently I had even mentioned at that time that uh, non maxima suppression right that is what you do. So, it is like saying that you know we want to identify local maxima right because there are so many of them that could be that could like I said that could potentially flag themselves as candidates therefore, you do what is called so, on these points right. So, perform non maxima suppression because right this could lead to too many too many corners uh, corners as possibilities. So, use non maximum suppression or non maxima suppression. So, this NMS rate right, is something that you will hear again and again 
okay, it is a simple idea, but you know it is needed. And this again right people around a 3 by 3 neighborhood. So, what do you do? So, you take a 3 by 3 neighborhood is chosen around a potential corner that means something that has crossed this threshold around a potential corner and it is retained if it is a if it is a if it is a local ma maximum. retained if it is a local maximum. And also right they have some other conditions also they say that you know, it should be at least 1 percent of the maximum strength of a corner in the image and so on these are some add ons right which you can keep putting. So, it is like saying that right, just because it is a local maximum and just because it has crossed a threshold necessarily. So, I think just one more safeguard that you know it should be at least 1 percent of the maximum strength of the corner that you would find in the entire image right that is ok not so is irrelevant ok. Now, one other thing right that we also talked about when we did uh, when we did edges right when we did the edge points and all there was one more thing that we were worried about of course, now we are talking about corners, but now what is it. So, for example, right in an image now I have been and uh, and and you see actually when you when you use this thing right on an image. Uh, it uh, no, it's kind of uh, it's kind of right interesting to see how it how, you know what all it flags and so on and there is a different people right depict it in in various ways. Some people will actually put a square around that, and you may think that uh, why is it flagging the whole area right when it is actually a corner, but then it's a way of showing right. So what they mean is more the strength of the corner the the larger the square around the area of the square around which. So the center of the square is actually the point. But then, how do you indicate the strength of the corner, right? So for that, they'll actually put a box, and the area of the box corresponding to the corresponds to the strength of the corner. Right? So, so you should not think that they are probably flagging a whole area as a corner or something. So that's just a, you know a, a depiction part. How let's say right, a different people depict, but the simplest way to say depict is to actually show it as a point, okay, on the on the image. And uh, one more thing, right? So for example, okay, now if I if I actually did this, let's say. Right, and I and I found found these corners, right? And uh, no, no, as you also asked, right? It's not like they have to be orthogonal edges and so on. Okay, you can have various situations where something gets flagged as a corner. So I see this is all like you know, let's let's also accept that, right? This is like a theory that we can lay down for uh, for the for a situation which is actually easy to understand, right? But then the moment you apply it on the algorithm, then all these cases, right? I mean, and also wherever wherever right it believes that 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 there is significant you know change in you know in ix and iui significant variation it will start flagging okay so the what we are deriving is for an understanding sake right because this is what we can understand easily but then when we actually put it on on the image right sometimes you may you may even you know it may not be even clear to you as to why something got flagged as a corner but maybe you should go and examine what the response was so, I am saying it is not so clean I mean see what I am drawing here is something that is like you know is like a cleanest thing which you can which you can visualize right. But uh, the moment you apply it on an image it will flag everywhere and then uh, you know you may wonder what is going on but yeah but then it is doing what it is supposed to do. One more thing right so when I say that this is a corner what else can I do again let us go back to what we did before is there something else that we should worry about. What else? I mean, so for example, right in H point, what were the I mean three things that we were actually worried about? Ha, ah, single response. Okay, that we have here because we have done NMS and we have got one response. What else? Single response. Then there was uh, what else was there? Localization. localization, right? So here, don't you think that we might have to do some kind of a subpixel localization because we are we are thinking that that's where the corner is, but it's possible that the actual maximum is occurring somewhere around it right within within a pixel right that is called that is what we mean by sub pixel right. So, Harris detection is typically done up to sub pixel accuracy ok sub pixel localization as it is called 